Hey everyone, it's Eric Thor here, and after analyzing millions of possible variables, looking at everything from the INFP dating life, looking at all your needs, your values, your interests, I believe I have found the only possible relationship match for you. Yes, after this video, you will know exactly what personal type you need to date and exactly what you need to do to have a fulfilling and long relationship. Truly, there is only one relationship combination that is ever possible to work for an INFP and all other relationship combinations are doomed to fail. Yeah, what I've seen is that INFPs, they need a special kind of match, a unique kind of match, a unique personality type, and there is only one other personality type that is able to give you truly what you need. Sure, let's talk about the runner-ups. Let's talk about the three... Second most likely options. The first option for an INFP is the ENFJ personnel type. Yeah, an ENFJ, somebody caring and loving, somebody that would listen to you, somebody that would be your supporter. An ENFJ is a person that would help you with all the things that you need in life. They would see and instinctively know what it is you want and they would be able to take an interest into your life and your inner world. Yeah, truly ENFJs are fascinated with you. They find you mysterious and they find you unique. However, the ENFJ combination, I just couldn't make it work. I just saw that an ENFJ personnel type would ultimately bring you to a restaurant. You'd sit down, you'd have a nice time, you'd talk. And ultimately, they would look to you and they would want you to decide what they should order. They look at you and they say, what should I pick from the menu? And you'd be like, I don't know. You pick what you like. And they just have a breakdown just right there. Yeah, truly, ENFJs, they're simply too people-oriented. They can't make decisions for themselves. So there is no way that relationship would work. So that brings us to the second option, another INFP. Yes, of course, INFPs, they're great, right? Yeah, truly, I'd see this a match made in heaven. Finally, somebody that matches you, that is on the same energy and wavelength as you, somebody that doesn't find you weird because they're weird too. Yeah, another INFP that would just find a way into your harmony and your balance. Truly, two INFPs that must be the dream pairing, right? Except you two are never gonna meet. You're never ever gonna meet another INFP and if you do meet them, you're never gonna take the initiative to form a relationship together. You're just gonna sit and think about dating each other's. What would it be like to date another INFP? Yeah, and that's where it would end because truly no INFP is ever capable of taking initiative in social situations and pursuing a date for romantic purposes. So that brings us to the third option, an ESTJ. Yeah, it's time we bring in the nuclear bomb match for the INFP. Truly, don't all INFPs need a boss to tell them what to do? Yeah, somebody to tell you to get up in the morning, somebody to tell you to get your work done, somebody to tell you to get your studies finished. ESTJs, they'd make sure you do everything on time. You'd uh, have all your clothes clean, you'd clean, make your bed every morning, you'd do your laundry on time. Yeah, everything would be great. You'd truly finally find structure and routine. You'd fit in with society. You'd become a part of the mold you would eventually just find a way to be successful and ambitious and career oriented. You'd be just like everyone else. And isn't that what all INFPs want? At the same time, yeah, I don't think an INFP would ever be attractive to an ESTJ. Why would an ESTJ ever put up with that? Truly, ESTJs, they'd just be frustrated. They'd just be ripping their hair out. They'd be like, seriously? They didn't make their bed again? Am I gonna do, have to do everything around here? And that's how it would end. So, having looked at all these possibilities, I found that there is one possibility, one silver lining, one type that is going to give you everything you ever dreamed of as an INFP. And that is an ISTP. 
Yeah, this might sound ridiculous to you, but an ISTP is going to give you all those things that you ever dream, dreamt of. An aloof and cold partner that will never verify you and will never make you feel good about yourself so that you will always find yourself racing and trying to improve yourself and trying to better yourself so that one day you'll have their approval. Yeah, a person that will point out all the mistakes you make during the day so that you could still find a way to hold on to that, uh, what you say, aloof, special snowflake symptom that you could always find yourself feeling sensitive, different, unique. Yeah, an ISTP would verify everything about an INFP. Just how weird you are, just how different you are, just how you will never fit in anywhere. Yeah, truly, the ISTP relationship is a unique one for an INFP. No, but seriously, there is no perfect match for you as an INFP. Your ideal type, your ideal partner is waiting for you out there. But what you like and what you find attractive is different from what other INFPs find attractive. Yeah, you might be into totally different types than other INFPs. Truly, ro romance and love is not mathematics. You cannot socially engineer this stuff. You can't make a relationship prediction chart. I've seen those charts out there, you know, they're putting uh, the INFP ENFJ match at 100% and the uh, INFP ESFJ match at 95%. Wow, great. It's like this is a horoscope. This is like uh, we believe that we can predict or measure these things mathematically, but trust me, nobody has ever tried to measure compatibility mathematically. There is zero scientifically valid studies that show what there is a specific type that will fit you as an INFP and you cannot engineer or create the fate or a destiny or a true match relationship chart while people might try to say oh all INFP relationships with INTJs are gonna look like this truly it's not possible to generalize what your relationship to another INTJ would look like you can't say what it would be like for you to date another ENFJ. Truly, because it would depend on their level of maturity, their hobbies, their interests, their energy, their age, maturity, and so many different factors. Love is simply too complex to materialize or to analyze from a mathematical perspective. So seeing people say that, yeah, okay, an INFP and an INFJ, yeah, great match, but in the end, all INFJs, they're too manipulative, so it would never work. Seeing those people write that, oh, an INFP, ENFP match, yeah, yeah, okay, fun in the beginning, but after a while you start getting bored. <laughs> seeing those people try to talk about or predict these things, it's like seeing somebody try to predict uh, which horse is going to win on the playing field. It is ultimately just speculation and guesswork, and these people often have no clue what they're talking about. So, instead, think about for yourself, what is love to me? What does the ideal relationship look like for me? What do I find attractive? Yeah, a lot of these things, they have more to do with what our parents' relationships look like, what our attachment style is, and what our love languages are, and what we've been taught about how to express and how to receive love. And these things are a lot of time more social and cultural than what they are related to your personality type. So don't look for a perfect match. Don't go out chasing for your dream ENFJ to fulfill you and complete you. No, look for inner fulfillment and inner completion. and. Uh, Whoever you happen to come across, however beautiful or how fascinating or how cool they are, that's the kind of person you want to look for. Just find somebody that is on your level of maturity, that has similar values and needs to you, that you feel a relationship with, a similar shared energy or space, a person you can communicate with effectively, a person that you can feel you can grow with, a person that you feel... Uh, wants and has similar drives and needs that you do you know and just listen to your heart listen to your feelings and listen to ultimately yourself and your own inner compass 
those are my views on the perfect relationship for an INFP and uh, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more videos like this. You can always unsubscribe later. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.